Hello, hello. Happy 2023. Well, listen, I am obviously taping this not in 2023. So disclosure, I am taping this on December 27th, um, 2022. I feel like we're in back to the future to you. With an enormous cup of coffee. And I was just about to upload a podcast and then this happened. And now this girl is on fire. So I was going through this beautiful Facebook group, Breaking Up a Sugar Facebook group, which I have to say, as per what we're about to talk about, diet culture vultures, uh, it's a great place. It's literally like, there's just not a space available for anybody to be anything other than generous and kind. And, you know, I think in diet culture, we have learned that we need tough and we need more pain, more gain. And, you know, kindness goes a long way. This is a truth of behaviorism, you know, rewarding children, dogs, dolphins for what they do works far better than punishing. Anyway, we've really, we've really spun out from that though, haven't we? So anyway, I'm just, you know, scrolling. It's not even in the break, Breaking Up a Sugar Facebook group. It's not even doom scrolling. I was just scrolling through the Breaking Up a Sugar Facebook group. And a woman writes um, this great post that I want to read you because I want to talk about it. This is what today's podcast is about. It's very 2023, my po- my podcast today. Far more than the one I was about to post, which is next week, which is a mindfulness. Stay tuned. Spoiler alert. So she writes about, so this woman says, Molly's podcast with Sophie Sheesh, this is three weeks ago, one of the best podcasts we've ever done on the show. My friend Sophie is just such a winner, uh, was one of the best. I managed to find it on YouTube and I watched it as well. My biggest takeaway quote was, my love for myself is greater than my care about disappointing you. That's something that Sophie said. My love for myself is greater than my care about disappointing you. Powerful stuff, right? How true is that when we're being offered just one cookie? I made it just for you. Or you can have birthday cake on your birthday. And Sophie says, no, I don't take heroin on my birthday. How powerful is that? Now to love myself that much, see, she says. I just left a Facebook group that I joined about two years ago. Around this time, I found Molly and breaking up with sugar. The creator of the group has become so judgmental. And while he has definitely helped a lot of people, including me for a while, I feel he has become destructive. I was feeling beaten up instead of supported in my challenges with sugar addiction. Not for me, no more. Then she writes really nice stuff about me, but we don't need to get into that today. Really nice stuff, but um, which I have to say, um, I learned the hard way. I mean, I learned by, you know, being too tough of a coach. I learned by having too tough coach. I learned by having nice coaches. And we're here on January 3rd, which means that, you know, the diet cult, the diet culture vultures are swarming in their circle around you. They're in your social media. I also, many of them started while I'm talking. So I'm a little sad. I didn't post this last week, but life on life's terms. Right. And I, I want to talk to you about diet culture in general. And I, I want to access your wisdom right here and now before you make a January 1st choice, which might I remind you, you can choose to change your life in any moment. I'm actually doing a group right now, an all-in intensive group right now where the people in the group started November 1st. So they've been doing intensive recovery work through the hardest times of the year. These women are off the charts. In fact, I'm having one of the women who's in the groups um, on what you're craving in two weeks. So stay tuned for that too. But it doesn't have to be January 1st that you start. There's nothing There's nothing to do with anything. I mean, the Jewish New Year's in September. Start in September. Start tomorrow. Start right now to pause this podcast. Go make a positive change. But I love this post so much because this it's like this woman woke up. I mean, she woke up, was able to see, and listen, different strokes are different folks, but was able to 
you know, see that she was experiencing this coach as judgmental and destructive and feeling beaten up. And the beauty of that, which is what I really want to talk about today, that's really actually breaking a, a trauma bond. It, it's pretty powerful when we can wake up and say, you know what? Even though this person is promising me freedom, even though this person is promising me weight loss, even though this person is promising me fast results, even though, you know, they're not keeping up to their end of the bargain. This is every, you know, you if you're not in 12 steps, which is a great way to heal, then every single relationship that you're in with these coaches is transactional. And I want to tell you this, these coaches, these therapists, these nutritionists, whoever you're choosing to hire, to help you heal, they work for you. <laughs> they were, if you come work with me, I work for you. It doesn't always feel that way because we get caught up in the cycle of abuse that we know really well. And I want to really try on the 3rd of January, if you're right now sniffing around, searching for who you're going to work with, or even if you've started to work with somebody and you're like, oof, Molly, stop talking. This is hurting too much. I really picked the wrong person. <laughs> I'm back in that cycle. I'm back in that cycle, Molly. You know, as I'm saying that you don't have to wait till January 1st to start, you know, healing your relationship with food and yourself, you don't have to spend one more minute in a coaching relationship. Like maybe, you know, somebody wrote me another, I get a lot of these emails and one woman said, you know, well, I'm in this group and I don't want to let the coach down by leaving. And, you know, I had some words about that, which I'll share with you, which I said, almost what Sophie said, right? Like your love for yourself has to be greater than disappointing a coach who you don't feel connected to and feel abused by, right? We, we have to be breaking this cycle of abuse. It's literally why diet addiction, very, I mean, I use that term so loosely for all of you scientists out there because it's kind of hard to, um, diagnose a diet addiction, except for that it isn't, right? Because the main two characteristics of addiction are need more of the substances, get the same high. And if you think about that as a criteria of what we're looking for, you know, people like me who are selling like a solid relationship with food and then, you know, someone else who's selling 30 pounds in 30 days, keep it off forever, you know, seven sizes. I mean, that's a greater high. And so, you know, when you're seeking a greater high, People like me are just not that exciting, but I'm exciting, you know, I'm exciting. And uh, I'm a, I'm a forever kind of girl. So that's the first criteria. And the second criteria, which is really true with dieting is withdrawal, you know, with, and, and the truth is, and this is what I deal with so much when I am helping people is that what I'm offering, which is consistency, which is self-determination, I mean, like sort of helping yourself figuring it out, like this day in, day out, using skills, like it having, for many of us, accepting that some foods biochemically don't work in our body. I mean, you know, that we are many people withdraw, have withdrawal. I mean, maybe not chemical the way that we do with alcohol, but certainly have like emotional withdrawal from, you know, where are the points? Where are the shakes? Why am I not starving? Like all of these things that we're so accustomed to when we're waiting for the dopamine hit of what diets promise us, which is weight loss or, and, and you know, a, a, a better life, which, you know, side note, I do remember the day, you know, I was just positive that this guy, Rob would love me when I was thin. And then I got thin and he didn't love me. You know, it's it, we put a lot of priority on this weight and, you know, weight isn't, I, I, I'm not one of those people who thinks that if you're in a body that, you know, is not the right size for you, that you need to stay in it. But I am a believer that weight is an outcome, not a measure. And we get so unbelievably caught up with you know, diet addiction and scale addiction. And I use these terms really loosely. I'm not using the word addiction scientifically, and you can use the word obsession, but diet obsession and weight obsession and body obsession that we end up throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? Like it's such an interesting disorder where 
you know, we try on our skinny jeans, they don't fit, and then we go harm ourselves with food. It's a really interesting disorder. And so anyway, when I was reading this post, I was like, oh my God, I like, we need, I want to help you be informed and prepared. And I, I don't like, listen, if you fall into the trap, I ain't going anywhere, but I want to try to help you not fall into the trap. And listen, another disclosure is, I have beautiful coaching programs, little, sweet, 10-person coaching programs. They're three months long. They're amazing. They're consistent. They're really holding. They're called all in as a result. I think you should do them. They're launching on the 8th. Um, but I don't think it's the only way. And if you need help, I have plenty of people who have been on this show who I would send you to treatment with. There's lots of really good people that can help you. The problem, I think, in, in many ways, uh, with the influx of people just using their personal experience and people not getting well trained. And, you know, I think a lot of people are treating from their trauma. A really important part of, at least in, you know, my training, which is certainly clinical and dialectical behavioral therapy and social work, but also in shamanism, is like the healer needs to be healed themselves before you know, they can really be helpful. And the other thing, Michael Bosick, uh, who's the co-host of Skinny Confidential, he posted something which is like, make sure that you want the life that the person that is coaching you has in every way, in every way, which I think you can be loose about that. But nevertheless, like, I don't know, personally, I live like a very happy, fulfilled, God-centered, happy, high-level life. And it's a function of practicing what I try to help people with every single day. Again, I'm not the only person that can help you, promise you that, but I want you to be start to be a little bit more thoughtful about where you're getting help and a little bit more liberal in firing your help. I love this woman in the Facebook group saying, you know what? It's a, It feels abusive, it feels... I don't think she said that. I don't, let me get the post up. But she said, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good to her. And, you know, when in the world are we going to start to trust ourselves, right? She says, it's destructive. I feel beaten up instead of supported. Not for me, no more. Gosh, I want to play Alicia Keys. This girl is on fire for that person. But remember this, and if you scroll down, there's like a whole podcast on this. I do a whole, there's a whole, I think there might be two podcasts on diet culture because it's it's at its height today. Well, it was, it's at its height today, okay? Because listen, because this is the first day everybody's sort of back to work. So diet culture, this is its favorite day of the year and it's here to destroy you. It is, it's here to take your money and keep you trapped in the cycle. You know, I always say this about diet culture, which is, it mimics an abusive relationship more than anything, even more than sugar in its own way, even more than sugar in its own way. You, you heard it here first. And the only thing that makes it worse than an abusive relationship with a, a human is the billion dollars of marketing that it has backing it, right? And the sales funnels and the this, and you know, and, and I listen, I've been trained in it too. You find the pain point and, 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 you getting well, and this is what I really want you to think about when you're hiring somebody, you're hiring somebody, they work for you, is are they looking to keep you in their cycle forever? Now, listen, there's a case to be made for that. Recovery, it's a long-term relationship with food. It's a long-term relationship with yourself. But is there no space in which this person that you're working with will say, you're doing great? Yeah, like maybe you want to stay in my membership site, but also you'll be fine on your own. Do you know how many people I've said that to? I just had a client the other day where I said that to her. I said, I don't know. Why don't you take a month off and see what life feels like without therapy for a minute, you know? Because she'd done like just the most spectacular work and becoming reliant on me is not something I'm interested in. I'm interested in everybody waking up, putting this eating disorder, disordered eating, addiction, whatever you want to call it, aside, because it is one of the most... You know, it keeps us so stuck in ourselves. It keeps our lives so small. And the world is really in a space right now where it needs us to not be so hyper-focused on our body and our food and our weight. We can get, we need to get that settled. 
But I want to also say there's like a lot of gaslighting that's going on because think about this thing that's happening for you right now. It's January 3rd. So many people have had like a tough run of the holidays. They've broken so many promises to themselves. You know, they've eaten things without their own permission. There's not been a whole lot of consistency. And then, you know, there's a lot of people who are here to like co-opt that, who are here to say, oh my gosh, you know what? I'm going to save you. Here's the thing. You're going to save you. You need a guide. You don't need a savior. And the other thing is, this is a process. And if this is a long scan, like, listen, if like you just had like a hard run on Christmas and this is like the first time this has ever happened to you, like a diet might actually be a great thing for you. But very few people listen to my podcast that are not like kind of long timers in the cycle, you know? And if you're a long timer in the cycle, a diet is going to make you sicker. A diet is going, a short-term solution is going to make you sicker. The thing that works is this like long-term integrated thing. And, and, and by the way, like this is very research driven, great book, terrible title called change or die. And it talks about, you know, repetition. It talks about finding somebody who you think can help you. And I really want to talk about that, repeating that over and over and over again, and then being in a community with people who do the same. I mean, that's how all change works. It's actually really, it's like actually literally 12 step. It's how that thing works. It's how really successful communities work, right? Finding something that you think you can do and that can stick, repeating that over and over and over again with a, a lot of support and then having a level of support outside of that. So I want to say that what happens when we chronically diet and we have failure because diets are literally set up to fail and you got to watch out for these coaches because there's going to be so much gaslighting going on. They are going to say, like that coach I talk about all the time, right? Do you know the common denominator of every diet that you failed at? You. And then they're going to say, I have the solution for you and you need to fix you. You don't need to fix you. That's what I think that woman is seeing in that group that she's in. Like, you don't need to be shamed into wellness. Like, you don't need to be you know, hopeless and in despair. Like many of us, even though we're struggling with our food, have a lot going for us. Like it doesn't have to be this terrible, whatever. We don't have to be, you know, it's really, there's a lot of gaslighting that goes on in this, right? Like, and you have a lot of truth. And by the way, especially if you've been in diet cycle for a long time, you have so much truth available to you because you know what doesn't work. In Breaking Up with Sugar, there's a great exercise about that in chapter, I think it's chapter four, where it just has you do this history of dieting and you're like, oh my God, I'm so terrible at this. Maybe I need to stop dieting. Maybe I need to take this in the more of the relationship setting that Molly is suggesting. So listen, diet culture relies completely on this thing called intermittent reinforcement. Okay, intermittent reinforcement, I'm gonna tell you the behavioral term for it. It's a delivery of reward at irregular intervals, a method that has been determined to yield the greatest effort from the subject. The subject does not receive a reward each time they perform a desired behavior or according to any regular schedule, but at random intervals. And that is literally what diet culture is because every now and then when you've gone and tried a diet, you've had this little kernel of success. Maybe it's just that first week, big weight loss, hot dopamine high that you get. Maybe you've actually had like a, like some long-term success, whatever it is, your brain is seeking that out. Your brain is seeking that out. It's seeking that out. And there's something about January 1st. And certainly after we've been on a bender and then all of these people like selling us fake hope where we're able to wake up and we're able to say like, okay, I'll try again. Right, because so many of us struggle with this thing called learned helplessness, which is the essence. It's a real trauma response from all of this, from all of the diets failing you, right? And it makes us vulnerable and it keeps us stuck. Um, learned helplessness is when we've struggled and struggled and struggled for so long, it just ends up that we believe that we absolutely can't get well. And so what ends up happening is that though most of um, people who have chronic diet failure do live mostly in 
uh, learned helplessness, which is like, it doesn't matter. I can't do it. There's really good podcasts on what you're craving with people who we talk through this. It's pretty incredible. There's one with Deb. That's like probably one of the best ones I've ever heard in my life. Because what ends up happening with learned helplessness is that the shame response, and remember the function of shame is to protect us from rejection, that our shame response and our learned helpless response becomes so profound that we just decide that we can't get well. But when you add in intermittent reinforcement, there's this little teeny thing inside of us that says, well, maybe this one, this person promising this thing or trying to scare me into wellness is, you know, going to help. It's not. And I... I want to remind you, you know, there's this new, so there's like trauma response, fight, flight, freeze. And then for the last like 20, 30 years, um, they've come up with this fourth trauma response, which is fawning. And I think actually, uh, and that means sort of, um, you know, pleasing, like people pleasing, right? A, a fawn response is very like uh, technically sort of like codependent or whatever, meaning that we are looking, we are prioritizing other people's needs above ours. And that makes sense as a trauma response, right? Like if you think you're going to die, then prioritizing someone need, someone's needs above yours is like, great. And that's, but that's so much what happens in diet culture when we're desperate and when we're like, oh my God, like this person just made me this promise. Something happens in our trauma response where we're like, I'm going to please them. I'm going to say yes when I mean no. Like they're going to ask me for all this money. I'm going to say yes when I mean no. They're going to tell me that I'm terrible and I need to try harder. I'm going to say yes when I want to say, you know, go F yourself. There's there's all of this stuff that is that happens like underneath the water of when you're deciding to take this brave leap, if you're deciding to take this brave January leap. And I want you to be aware of it. What I want you to be aware of most of all is this. I actually would love for you, you know, there's a great pod, not not the, there's a great podcast about wise mind. You know, I, I really I wonder what it might be like if you shopped a little bit. If you shopped a little bit, if you told this coach, you know, I'm gonna think about it. They might say to you, you know, we only have one spot left. There's only one spot left. There's only one. That's a big thing in marketing, right? Because there's an urgency. And then we make choices that are not based in our wise mind. You know, what if I promised you? What if I really I'm gonna promise this to you that, you know. If they won't wait for you, then they ain't your person, right? If you need a minute to think, you know, number one, the coaching will open again, but number two, they're not your person because you're not, you might not be ready. You deserve to give yourself the gift of thorough research, of deeply finding your wise mind, you know, of, of just taking your time. You know, that's a big part of the January one is urgency, urgency, two minutes left. This, it, it's like, you know, a like the course will open again because most courses, if they're annual, they open up again. And there's a lot of people doing the same work. <laughs> I mean, that's there's a lot of people doing what I'm doing. There's a lot of people doing the same work. So I promise you, you can find it elsewhere. Don't get caught up in this fawn response. Don't get caught up in urgency. Remember what I say, urgency is never wisdom. If you're going to take this brave attempt, I don't want you contributing to the fund of learned helplessness. I want you be contributing to the fund of like forever wellness, of contributing to your health and your wellness and your goals and your enlightenment, and all of these things that really, really matter. And that's what I needed to tell you today. And I want you to feel free to fire somebody who makes you not feel good about yourself. Because if you don't fire them and you don't tell them that, you're recreating some trauma that's happened to you in your life. And you have this opportunity to break the ties. I want, if you remember one thing today, I want you to remember that you hire people when you, and if with the exception of 12 step, which is the most beautiful you know, true helping of each other without any money passing hands, right? You help another person so that they can help another person and so on and so forth. I love a 12-step group. And sometimes we need some outside help, some professional help. But if you're sitting with a professional that's not, listen, and I've been a therapist a long time. It's not always like, you know, rainbows and unicorn and comfort and lazy boy chairs. Sometimes you're doing really hard work, you know? Sometimes people really don't like me. But validation is not about kindness. Validation is about truth. And again, there's soft ways to tell the truth. There's You want to be working with somebody who makes you feel 
that you can become this best version of yourself. I work with some, one of my spiritual guides is like that. She is so tough. I don't know if you heard the podcast. She's the person who said to me, Mal, she was working with me on some of my codependency issues. And she said to me, you know, this week, Molly, I don't want you to buy anything for anybody or like go out of your way to like people, please people. And I literally was like, I don't know that that's possible. Literally, I didn't know if it was possible. It's a really bad habit. And, but I knew because I had broken up with sugar and alcohol and cigarettes and everything. I know that that feeling to me is something like, okay, time to jump off the cliff. Let's do it. But the real reason I did it is because this woman, I guess effectively she's a coach. She's a guide. She's a mentor. She demands that I am the best version of myself all of the time and loves me through it. Like she sees me and she loves me. And so I know that when she's asking things of me, it's because she can see things that I can't see. And I'm going to try a little bit harder because I have faith because she's doing this from a loving place. That's how I want you to feel about anybody who you hand money to. Anybody, that's how I want you to feel about anyone you don't hand money to. But that's how I want you to feel about every single person. I don't want you to think there's some like weird concoction. They have something that you have. You want somebody who's helping you become the best version of yourself. Everyone else, fire. Fire them. You're in a transactional relationship. That's it. That's This is what's true. And this is what you need to know as January 3 is here because they're really coming to get you. Okay. That's a lot of talking. I don't, you know, this is, I just, this girl is, I'm on fire. This beautiful woman who just quit that group is on, we're all on fire. Watch out world. Here we come. So listen, it's Wednesday. It's January 3rd. There's Intensati tonight. Talk about being able to find your power. Come to Intensati tonight. And while you're up, I'm having an amazing retreat on um, this Sunday, on January 8th. Now, listen, I hate Jan 1. You know that about me. I hate it. I hate it. I only like to contribute. But then I feel like because there's all these vultures around, I have to contribute. So I'm not doing New Year's resolutions. If you know me, even for, if you listen to this podcast, you're like, oh, Molly's anti-resolution. I totally am. But I'm not anti-integrity and I'm not anti-sort of taking a Sunday to sort of get get your vision right, to just get it together. And so what I want to talk about for this year's theme is about choosing yourself, right? It's about choosing yourself. That's a skill. That's a skill. That's hard to do. I mean, just listen to the story I told you about my mentor saying, Molly, stop pleasing everyone else. Stop having such a fawn response in life. And so we're going to be doing you know, you never leave, you'll never leave a workshop with me without some hard skills to have with you. But we're going to be really tapping into our best selves, thinking about, you know, who we want to be, what we want to do and how to create the year so that we don't feel so burdened by life. The way to feel less burdened by life is to have a balance of choosing yourself, like in the highest and best way is not like choosing to, you know, binge your brains out at night. Like that's a function of usually not taking care of yourself. And so we're going to talk all about this. Not only are we going to talk about it, we're going to talk about it. We're going to have small groups about it. We're going to intensati about it. We're going to create a word for the year about it. It's going to be a lot of things that we're going to do. It's five hours long, 12 to five Eastern time. And you can sign up for all of this on mollycarmel.com. Now, listen, if you just want a little intro to me, you're like, listen, I love you. You seem amazing. But Molly, you just told me to do my research. I stand. Oh, wait, one more thing. Sorry. At this retreat, we are going to, I'm going to be launching, I think about 15 spots, probably 20 spots for coaching for three months of coaching, February, March, and April. And you'll get a 20% discount on the coaching if you sign up for the retreat. And the coaching is going to be very reasonably priced, even if you can't make the retreat. It's just going to be super reasonably priced if you can make the retreat. And even though I'm not running the coaching groups, I will be running one coaching group a month of your coaching group. So you'll have me and then you'll have your other coach. And it's like, the, it's called all in intensive and it is really all in intensive and people are getting so well from it. I like had this little idea nugget in my mind of what I thought could be something that could really help people because I'm not launching a coaching program 
unless I think it's going to be amazing. And actually it um, exceeded all of my expectations. Isn't that crazy? So beautiful. I encourage you if you're considering, as you can see, mine isn't starting to February 1st, go do some shopping, go do some shopping. I'm here. Anyway, and this retreat is a great place also to meet people, um, to get into your power circle, because, you know, a lot of times it's not even that we don't want to get well, it's that we don't have enough care and we don't have enough help. So I want you to think about that. Now, if you're like, listen, hey, buy a lady a drink, Molly, you know, a little too soon with all your sales, fine. There's this really great um, free video on my website, just if you sign up, like just on my website. It's like, it's, it's this really great. It, like, I just thought, oh, you're supposed to give a giveaway on your website. That's what they say. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to give a giveaway, it's actually going to be quite useful. So I made you a little video, like three ways to start right now. And it really is helpful. So that's all out of me. My goodness. I love you. I'm so excited to start another year podcast and all. It's going to be a great one. Next week, we got some mindfulness. This like delightful man named, named Man Manaj. It's like, I mean, he dropped so many bombs. Bring your pencil. Week after we're having Alyssa, who's in my um, who's in my coaching group. She's gonna, she said such a transformation. I want to tell you about that. We have a lot of transformations hooked up. And also tell me what you want. How can I help you? I work for you. If you've learned anything from the Vulture podcast, I work for you. And I love you. And I love you. I'm excited to bring 2023 in together. Take care. I'm rooting for you. Oh, you know, and I'll stand by this. DM me if you're like, well, you seem great, but I want someone else to help me. I have great people that can help. There are great, if you are going to invest your time, money, and energy, do it with someone who you really like want to work with, who you know is going to make you feel your best self. Also scroll down uh, all the What You're Craving episodes because there's no one on my show that I wouldn't be treated by. I promise you that. Well, maybe except for the intuitive eating author, but that's another story for another time. All right. Happy new year. Love you.